Hey Jules Plus Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those who are new I know you can benefit. So I'm totally just caught up in what I now know is called a docu-series. So it is a documentary but it's over a series of episodes and it's called Rotten and it's the story behind our food and it's so interesting to me. I'm only on like episode four which was on the chicken industry and again they're talking about largely the corruptness you know so ideally as a vegan you don't eat chicken <laughs> if you're not vegan yet i highly encourage you to stop eating chicken uh, but it was still fascinating to listen to because it was saying that there are 59 billion chickens killed a year in the world 9 billion alone in the united states um, this one company, which was bragging, you know, about how incredible they are, was killing 12 million chickens a day. All of these chickens are literally designed on an assembly line from the moment they're hatched to the moment that they are slaughtered. And the average is about 42 days, which of course could never take place in nature, right? I mean, I think a regular chicken at adolescence is about six months and a full grown adult chicken is almost two years. And every 42 days, uh, they are going from zero to slaughter. And it's a really big deal because um, the growers are the people who just have the chickens um, during that period of time. And then of course they go on to the actual chicken industry that is in charge of the slaughtering and everything. And because it's kind of funny. They should be the top line in the sense that they're producing the product. But instead, they're the bottom line. And even though a whole chicken can be sold for like seven fifty, they get about $0.35 cents for, for a chicken. So they felt like it was really unjust. But what was interesting to me was their ability to ignore the fact that all of these chickens are going to be slaughtered and killed. Like that just wasn't even on their mind, even though literally every 10 weeks they get like, for instance, this one chicken outfit had 20,000 chickens in one house and 16 houses of 20,000 chickens. And what the big thing was, was back in, um, I think I remember the actual date, February 17th, 2015 on February 17th, 2015. All of these uh, growers that they referred to were completely devastated because somebody sabotaged their chicken houses. And within a two week period, like 350,000 chickens were killed. And it was because they modified the heating system or the cooling system. And I guess chickens prefer to be like 92 degrees. And it got up to like 122 degrees. And when the guy came in, there were 20,000 chickens dead. He said it was just like a sea of white. And he was literally crying and saying how much he loves to work with his chickens and how his goal is to make sure he doesn't even kill one chicken. And how sickened he was to see all these chickens. And then the other man was saying that these poor chickens were tortured, like in death, you know, they were essentially fried hello i'm like don't these guys know that when someone comes in a big truck and takes away their hundred thousand chickens every 42 days that they're all going to be killed <laughs> like what it was so bizarre and it was true for them but it reminded me of um you know during uh the holocaust and hitler and everything and those people who worked for hitler being able to see it as a job slaughter Jews all day, uh, burn them, have them, um, you know, in showers of poison, uh, shooting them outright all day long, taking the gold and everything out of their teeth, and then going home to dinner and playing with their children. No big, no problem. That's just work, right? Leave work at work. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, like, I'm so sorry for your chickens, which you're absolutely killing. I knew right away that it wasn't an activist. Because I knew an activist would have opened up those huge doors and let all those chickens free. Sadly, a lot of those chickens wouldn't be able to even go because they're too heavy to stand, right? And then the guy was saying how now he has to check the chicken's feet because they're finally able to sell the chicken feet 
as a uh, bar appetizers in China. And I'm like, oh God, I'm so glad you found a purpose for those too. I, it was hard. It was hard to watch. They weren't showing chicken slaughter or anything. They were just showing why the industry is so successful. But these guys just felt so devastated by being ripped off, but they, it never occurred to them that they're going to be held accountable for killing g gazillion chickens. The scary part was this is one guy, because I get, just told you it was 59 billion chickens a year worldwide, 9 billion in the United States alone. And this one man was saying, we're going to have to figure it out because we're going to have to double the number of chickens to meet the demand by 2015. And we're trying to figure out how to meet that demand. How about let's undemand the need to kill any chickens. Let's eradicate that demand with fruit and vegetables, right? Kai, I, it was just astounding. But I'm guilty. I mean, I certainly ate chicken a million times, not a million times, but many times in my life. What happened to me, and I was thinking of this with those men and their ability to ignore that they're actually killing all these chickens while they're mourning the harsh conditions in which the chickens died, um, was that when I was a little girl, we used to get fresh chicken meat, just raw right? Plucked fresh chicken meat. You could even see the, uh, what are they called? I have gooseies. What does Jennifer Lopez always say? I have gooseies. Oh, kind of like the goosebumps on the chicken skin, right? I mean, it was just so darn real. And sometimes when we would cook it and I'd be taking a bite, I'd like find a vein or something. And it became so real that I just couldn't even eat it unless it was completely covered uh, in bread, you know, like Kentucky Fried Chicken. If it was fried and covered and I couldn't see a vein, I was good to go. If it was um, in, you know, bread, what are those called when you dip it in bread? I don't know, crumb, breadcrumb, I guess. Whatever, if it was a McDonald's... Um, I'm on fry. I'm always on fry when I talk to you guys. Oh my gosh, I never realized how I can't recall anything until I, until I start talking. It's just like, oh my gosh, I'm stressed out in my life. But it's still worth talking about Chicken McNuggets. Thank you. Um, if it was Chicken McNuggets, like things like that, right? Perfectly cut, perfectly shaped. Um, even they had these big, it's not white meat only, right? Like it just made it more acceptable. I used to go to Claim Jumper, and they would have these gigantic pieces of white chicken. Um, but the sauce was so good. I mean, like, I'm guilty, guilty, guilty. I certainly don't do that now. I remember when we were children, we had a rooster for a year, and we never ate chicken or anything for the entire year. I wish that were true for my pig, but my husband still will have bacon occasionally. Not in the house, though. He has to eat it somewhere else, but still. Anyway, though, what do you think, you guys? I, It's just interesting how people can compartmentalize, you know, what they are actually guilty of or being held accountable for. I mean, those men, gen, like, really were thinking that they really care well for their chickens and that they do their best to keep them alive. And I know that's all profit margin, let's be fair. But in no way were they sensing that at the 10 week mark, they're sending all of those chickens to slaughter. And it was straight up. I mean, they knew right away that those chickens were only designed from birth to death to live inside that house of 20,000 chickens. And that was their existence. Um, to be fair, in another part of the docu series episode uh, they showed how some other people are raising the chickens a little different of course they're costing much more but they are raising them outside they get to play a little bit they get to feel like they're a chicken and then they get slaughtered but they feel much more humane during the time that they're playing and acting like chickens before they get killed and again I'm guilty of that because I used to say you know, let that chicken live 
a humane life until you kill it. And then someone was like, really, Juliana? You do get that they're going to still be killed, right? Loving this hair action. Oh, my hair is such a fright right now. I, I, I just can't believe I panicked and cut it. Ah, I'm breathing. I still don't have a job. I'm breathing. <laughs> I'm trying to find my way, my friends. What am I doing right? I'm glad you asked. I'm eating right. I'm exercising. I'm praying. Taking care of my family. Showing up. Showing up for Jill's Blessed Vegan. All right. Like if you like. Join us if you haven't. Tell me what you think of that. Do you understand that concept of being able to separate your mind from what the truth is versus what you want to see? We tend to only see what we want, and we certainly don't want to feel like we're murdering. And those men don't believe that they are. But it's the end game, no matter what, because they get paid per pound of chicken. Oh, and this was another sad thing. It wasn't just per pound of chicken, but how little feed they use versus the pounds. So they try and get him as fat as they can with as little feed possible. How pray tell? Unless you're giving him artificial stuff to plump them up, right? All right, that's my sad story of the day. Until we talk again, my friends, comment below and be blessed.